Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moses Lee. This is my new show, Fast Break, where I quickly break down different NBA players, showcase their backgrounds, skills, and how they got to this point today. I know it is currently playoff season, so I'll be talking about that in a bit. Please stay tuned. Uh, I will be talking about future projects that I'll be finishing up and future possible guests that can hop on and talk about hoops with me. Thank you, and you're listening to the Fast Break Podcast with Moses Lee. Jaden motherfucking Ivy, call him the bucket getter, bucket distributor, uh, motherfucking turning the bucket over. I think we all basically know who Mr. Ivy is. Pistons bad boy number 23 could beat rookie of the year, but Paolo is too good. So is Jalen Williams and Walker Kessler, but that's fine. Those are different people. This is motherfucking Jaden Ivy. Um, we call him Mr. 16-4-6 without Kane and Cade uh, on 41-35-75 splits and 16-4-5 on 42-34-75 splits in general with Cade on the floor. He was drafted number 5 by the Pistons in the 2022 NBA Draft. He did come straight from Purdue where he averaged 14-4-3-1 steal on one block on 44-32-74 splits and Right when he went to the NBA, he basically translated his same game uh, right from the get-go. But just by looking at his game now, it definitely looks like he knows what he is doing and could be a star on his own team. But right now, he is one of the most dynamic. He, uh, one of the most dynamic young uh, backcourt duo in him and Cade. But with Cade uh, out recovering from a shin surgery, Jaden has taken this opportunity, has tried to capitalize it to the best of his abilities. I currently have him um, on my fantasy team this past year and uh i did not make it to championship but that's fine luca uh did unfortunately let me down by sitting out those last couple games but it's fine we still talk about jane and ivy so and he do be putting up that mini triple double work and he does kind of remind me of a miniature younger russell westbrook like type of nba player just the way how he starts and finishes fast breaks hence the name motherfucker the fast break um, so we're going to go into uh, some of this background info. So this is before high school. He was born in South Bend, Indiana on February 13, 2002. Uh, Jaden was born into a sports-loving family. His father, a former Notre Dame wide uh, receiver, drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the NFL. And his mother is a retired WNBA player and head coach at the University of Notre Dame women's basketball team. Jaden did a lot more than just playing basketball during his childhood. He played football, soccer, and even practiced karate. Maybe he could teach you know Isaiah Stewart uh, some karate so he could beat uh, LeBron's ass. Just kidding. We all know he could still beat LeBron's ass without even learning karate. But he did ultimately decide that basketball was the sport of his choice in his freshman year of high school. In his high school career, he enrolled at Marion High School located in Mishawaka, Indiana in his first three years. For a senior citizen, he did ultimately decide to transfer to La Lumere uh, School in La Porte, Indiana, one of the most one of the top programs in the entire country. And he was a definite and consensus four-star recruit. And after senior year, he committed at Purdue over offers like Butler University and even Norton Dahm University, where his mother and father were alumni of. Which is pretty wild how he chose Purdue. But uh, look, taking a look at Purdue and his uh, time at Purdue, in uh, Jaden, uh, Jaden's college career, he did average 14.9 points, 4.3 rebounds, and 2.6 assists on 44, 32, 74 splits. Numbers don't exactly jump out. However, just by watching him play, you can definitely see the potential and skills of a lottery pick. In his freshman year of college, he did miss five games due to a foot injury he had. However, I believe that his best performance of his freshman year happened on January 19th, 2021 against Ohio State University. We're like less than 10 seconds left. With the game down 64-65, Jaden hits enormous step back three. Fucking James Harden out here to give the lead to Purdue 67-65 to raise 11 point deficit and wins the game. And uh, during this time, he has been pretty emotional. So uh, after the during the post game interview, the interviewer asked him well, how he felt after the game winning shot. And this is his quote: "I've been in a slump, and I've been trying to gather myself because I've been struggling mentally. 
I want to win and I want to win so bad. To see that go in, it just meant so much. My teammates instilling that confidence in me definitely helped. In his first NCAA tournament, Jaden poured in a then season high 26 points but came short to the North Texas University and lost in the first round. So kind of a little upset for him, I guess, um, seeing that he is projected to be an NBA player in sort. So as a freshman, he did average 11.1 points, 3.3 rebounds, and 1.9 assists, which earned him the Big Ten All-Freshman Team honors. That was his only accolades of freshman year, and he decided that he's not going to be declaring for the NBA draft, that he will return to Purdue for his sophomore season just to elevate his uh, play a little bit more and just to show basically NBA scouts what he's about. And his uh, sophomore season, uh, he was bas- uh, he was back on pace and ready to continue and establish his presence for the NBA draft 2022. So on January 30th, 2022, basically a year later, against the same school, Ohio State University, that he played that freshman year that he made that game-winning three-point shot, he again shoots a ridiculous game-winning fadeaway three over Ohio State with 0.6 seconds left, which gave Purdue an 81-78 lead and winning the game. Another crazy game, another... uh game where you could see flashes of his potential and how good he could be in the league so as a sophomore he did average 17.3 points which is a 6.2 point increase from last year 4.9 rebounds 1.6 rebound increase from last year 3.1 assists 1.2 assists increase from last year and landed him on the first team all big 10 and the all-american second team incredibly huge honors And this is why uh, Ivy decided that it was time for him to finally prepare for the 2022 NBA draft and was projected to be a a top five pick near players like Paulo Bancaro, Chet Holmgren, Jabari Smith Jr., Keegan Murray, and Benedict Matherin. So let's talk about the NBA draft for a second. Uh, During the NBA draft, he was projected to be a locked in top five pick. We saw Paulo go to the Magic. We saw Jet go to the thunders we saw jabari go to the rockets we saw keegan murray go to the kings and then Jaden falls at the fifth to the pistons which was an excellent choice especially for the fifth pick so honestly everyone thought that the kings would select Jaden ivy at the fourth because there's no way you could pass someone up with this type of upside like Jaden. Uh, i understand that keegan murray he is a beast like that man man shoots threes like man shoots three like curry I guess that is something that the Kings were looking towards, uh, but looking back at the Kings' previous lottery picks, they already had bring in guards like Tyrese Halliburton, Davion Mitchell, and seeing that Tyrese didn't really fall into the mold of the Kings' future and that they traded him away for Demonis Sabonis, it kind of showed that they didn't really need another guard, they needed more of like a, a wing type of player, so that's why they went with Keegan Murray, just because he's the best three-point shooter in the draft. And so this all worked out for the Kings eventually. They did hit third seed, and they made it to the playoffs going against the Warriors right now. As I speak, it is 3-2 Warriors. So I believe that the Warriors are going to take it all just because uh, De'Aaron Fox does have a broken finger. And it seems like much of the other Kings players can't really hold their width against the Warriors, which is understandable. It's motherfucking Warriors. What can I say? So... Yeah, but however, this did all work out for Jaden, who was seen crying with tears of happiness when he was selected by the Detroit Pistons. His mother and uh, and he were truly in a state of emotional happiness because they do have deep roots roots connected in Detroit. And now that he is able to live there with his family and get paid the big bucks while doing so, I, I haven't even checked. Let me check. Currently, this man is making seven million dollars. Next year, he's going to make 7.2, 7.6 million, sorry. <clears throat> so let's talk about the Summer League, where we got to see, basically, rookies get into action against one another and a couple other NBA players that are still trying to make a name for themselves in the league. So in the first game of the Summer League, we got to see Jaden Ivey and Shaden Sharp, basically the uh, Pistons versus the Trailblazers, both lottery picks. We got to see how both rookies could showcase their skills and strengths. In classic Jaden Ivey fashion, he 
He did drop a team high 20 points along with 6 rebounds and 6 assists, showcasing his versatility and Russell Westbrook like profile. We also did get to see the turnover, how we get we also did get to see how turnover and foul prone he can be. However, I believe with years of NBA training, coaching experience, he'll be able to trim those turnovers and fouls down for some time just to stay out there longer on the court and make a true true impact for his team. Unfortunately, the summer league his summer league career did uh, surely end because in day three, I believe the second game of his uh, summer league, he did suffer an ankle injury with only five minutes left of the first quarter because he landed on the foot of Isaiah Todd and he was visibly in pain, had to be ushered out the court. But during those seven minutes that he was able to play, he did drop in a quick 11 points and two assists, which is still very remarkable. Um, not a lot of people can do that in seven points minutes. That's basically that's basically like 15 points that he was accumulated for, that he was responsible for in those seven minutes. So that's almost two points a minute that he was able to produce, which is crazy. But that is just a summer league. So um, skipping a couple days, uh, a couple weeks later, we go into the rookie season, his uh, debut, October 19, 2022 debut game against Orlando Magic where he dropped 19, 3, 4 assists, and 3 steals. A very impressive performance given that he shot 8 for 15 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3, and 1 for 1 from free throw, and with a uh, plus minus box score of minus 4. Uh, not bad, not shabby. He did manage to put drop 19 points in his first game ever, so that's just still very remarkable as well too, especially that Cade was there too, but at the same time, if you were watching the game, you could see that Cade was basically dishing him the ball, and he, uh, Jaden, is more of a scorer slasher type of guy, so I can understand why. So in his first game, we were able to see uh, flashes of Ivy's potential of getting to the bucket with ease, uh, and being able to use IQ to play make for his teammates as well. Not only that, we also got to see how Jay could slide and fit right in with Cade, getting the dub with uh, with four more points against the Magic, and unfortunately for the Pistons and Jaden and Abby fans, we were able only to see Cade and Jaden share the court together for only 11 games, where they did go, uh, I believe, 3-8 and eight on that stretch before Cade went, underwent a season-ending sin surgery. With Cade on the floor, Jaden did average 15.4 points, 5.4 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 1.5 steals, and 0.5 blocks. Uh, like I said earlier today, and without Cade, when he's when he's the main facilitator, Ivy averaged in 63 games, 16.4 points, 5.5 assists, 3.6 block uh, rebounds, sorry, 0.7 steals and 0.2 blocks. So when the Pistons play both players at the same time, uh, they'll have Jaden take the more rebounding defensive approach. And seeing his rebounding and stocks go up, well, without Cade, we use uh, we see him be used more of a, as an offensive facilitator. Thus, those points and assists average grows higher. Although we could see flashes of star potential in Ivy, his turnovers and plus minus shows that the possible downsides of Ivy's game for a whole year. Average uh, he averaged 16.3 points, 3.9 uh, rebounds, 5.2 assists. 0.8 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 3.2 turnovers on 42, 34, 75 splits. The 3.2 turnovers is incredibly high, especially for a rookie, but he is a rookie again, and he is basically did start every single game that he was in. So I, I understand because <clears throat> the Pistons did rely on him to be the offensive facilitator, especially with uh, Kate out. So I understand those mistakes that he could have been uh, enforcing and not really, really caring too much. But I believe with like enough time and with the coaching staff around him, and I'm pretty sure, uh, I think Dwayne Casey just got promoted to the front office. So I think they're looking at different coaches. So we'll see how that goes. See um, the trajectory of both Kate and Jaden. I'm um, more on the fence of Jaden just because I actually really like Jaden's game. Cade's game is also amazing as well too. That's why he was a per first pick last year. But I mean, Ivy is just a fifth pick, um, especially like his plus minus total this year was negative six hundred forty-two, which is crazy. But I mean, you 
at the same time you can definitely understand that because the Pistons were having a 17-65 uh, record season going dead last in the standings above I mean for the east and the west so they could possibly get first to get Victor Wembanyama, which will be crazy just that alone the starting five would probably be Cade Jaden Ivey uh, Sadiq Bey is gone I forgot about that if they keep Boyan, they'll probably keep Boyan at the sh- uh, at the small forward. I believe it's it has to be either Marvin Bagley or James Wiseman at the four. I'm gonna have to go more James Wiseman just because he cause he's able to stay on the floor longer. I think Marvin Bagley has been pretty much injured like half the season, so I I could see James going the four and then Victor just going the five, which would be pretty deadly lineup especially given their age they're i'm pretty sure they're all under 25 so that would be crazy i think the actually no i'm sorry boyan would be the oldest oldest one he's like probably 33 right now 34 um but still a really good veteran for the uh pistons given that he's really he knows how to shoot the rock so if he is able to teach uh if he's able to teach Jaden, he can definitely get those um splits a lot higher so, what does the future hold for Jaden Ivey? Although Jaden Ivey does have a hard time keeping the ball to himself and turns over the rock often, that doesn't stop us from seeing how high Jaden's potential can become. If he just picks up his slack and not make foolish and minor mistakes, he can become a superstar one day in this league. With young talent on the rise, I see so many teams preferring to have youngins on their roster besides a bunch of veterans. There will be an, an intense competition for all players to become NBA superstars just because, you know, that's who they want to be. You know, that's why the reason why they came into the NBA, they didn't come into the NBA just to become like, you know, just role players. I guess some do to get the bag, but I, I respect that. Like, I, honestly, if I was in the league, I, would, I wouldn't really care about being a superstar. I'd just try to see if I can make my career last as long as possible just so I could get that bag. And also I could just, play, you know, be in the NBA environment soak everything in while it lasts you know and i mean it probably lasts like maybe max 20 years that's like you know if you're lebron but we'll see how that goes um yeah so uh, it it's basically just gonna make these watching these games more even more fun and rooting for the rookie or underdog to you know become essentially him not as in jaden ivy but you know him you know i'm him uh i love to see jaden uh run the point dictate the flow of the game however he is only 21 years old i'm 23 uh it's kind of crazy i am asian at the same time so i'm not i don't have those god-given talents which i pray to god that every single day i do but i can't so i could definitely see this uh pistons next year become a playoff team if all goes well and they draft women yama or scoot i believe the scoot still can make a big impact he could probably slide in that three spot and then they could have Boyan go to the four, or they could just have Boyan come off the bench. So I'm not too sure how that will go. But I mean, the most ideal situation would be drafting Wemin Yama, but I don't know what's going to happen with Jalen Durian. I don't know what's going to happen with Bagley. I don't know what's going to happen with uh, Wiseman. I don't know what's going to happen with Stewart. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing out any big men in that. But it's fine. Yeah, so. Um, uh, I just want to see how Jaden will be able to fit in the mold. I'm pretty sure he can. He's played in Purdue. He played with Zach, which is also another big man. Um, especially the way how he plays. the way, But the way how Victor Wembanyama plays, that man shoots threes. He did pull-ups threes. Not even, you don't even see most guards, like rookie guards do that. So if we're going to see that, that'd be kind of crazy. And I also just want to see how well he will be able to manifest himself in the playoffs. Not only just him, but the team as well. I am rooting for the Pistons. However, the Thunder, in my opinion, is the best young team in the entire world. Uh, the I believe that the Thunder will make it, will become contenders. Maybe, uh, definitely not next year. Actually, maybe next year. If they get a really solid draft pick this year. But, you know, Sam Presti's him, so we'll see. Uh, now that Dwayne Casey went to the front uh, front office, I don't know how the co- head coaching situation will, will become. Maybe they'll... I know the Rockets just picked up Ime Udoka. Udoka, sorry. I butchered that. So, we'll see how that goes. I'm not too sure. But I do believe that 
right now, we can definitely say that Jaden is one of the most brightest young talents we are currently witnessing. And I truly become, and I truly hope he does become that poisoned ivy that will tear down future teams with this ruthlessness of gate to the basket and intensity. Yeah, so I just believe that Jaden Ivy, he does have that superstar potential. He can get to that next level. Uh, I believe that he can do, he could be him, essentially, um, especially with Cade and the SS backcourt duo. Not much defense, I guess, but Jaden, he could, I'm pretty sure Jaden, like, as time will go on, he can, he will be able to stay, like, hold his own. He does have that very bulky frame, even though he's pretty small. Uh, that man, that man can jump, so that's all I can say. Just hope that no uh, injuries can happen. I know especially during these playoffs right now, the injuries uh, injury bug has been very ruthless to everyone. So we'll see how that goes. Just hope that Jaden can continue on his, uh, his excellence. Turn down those turnovers and fouls a little bit, just a little bit. And elevate his game next year. He still does have a couple months until the next season begins. So we'll see how the NBA draft goes. And I'm not too sure if we'll be able to see him play in next year's summer league. I have a feeling he might because you know Josh Giddy played last year. Josh Giddy had better numbers than he did than he did last year. So we'll see how that goes. Um, if he is going to be playing in the summer league, I'm gonna definitely watch that for sure. I need to see him hoop against, especially if they have Victor Wembanyama on the team. That that would be fucking crazy. So. Yeah, so let's go, uh, let's talk about the playoffs for a little bit. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my recording for the playoffs uh, was not able to fit into this video, so I just put it into another video. So if you guys can check episode 2 for playoff opinions, that would be more than great. Thank you very much. Hope to see you there.